Hi, and welcome to Mooney Eni's Cooking School. Today we're going to be showing you how to leverage from your pizza dough to make a variety of different dishes such as empanadas, flatbread, and calzone. And we're going to start with flatbread right now. What you'd be using is just the regular dough ball, same size and everything that you'd be using for pizza. And I'm just going to follow the same procedures to hand stretch. So direct overhead pressure, lift it, fingers meet in the center, pull through once, pull through the opposite side, and now I'm just gonna lift and rotate. And you'll notice because I'm looking for more of a crackery thin crust on this, I'm gonna be stretching it a little larger than I would for a 10 to 12 inch Neapolitan pizza. You actually wanna see the dough look nice and thin in the center. And one thing you can also do instead of hand stretching is use a rolling pin, since we're not looking for that bubbly crust on the outside. So if you wanted to take a rolling pin and just press out some of that air, you'll get a thinner, more crackery crust. So we're gonna move this right onto the board. And we're gonna very lightly top this today. So just some fresh rosemary. And a little bit of Parmigiano. And now we're gonna load this into the oven just as you would a pizza. So once that hits the floor, Make sure that you leave it there for 30 seconds so that it can develop a nice rigid crust on the bottom of it. And then you can come in and use your polino to turn it just as you would a pizza. You will notice that this will have a faster cooking time than a Neapolitan pizza because there are less ingredients and it's a lot thinner dough. And this is delicious served not only as an appetizer that you can serve with a side salad or a charcuterie board, but we often serve it as the side of a main meal such as a braise, which is delicious. And once you're done, you should see nice speckled char all the way around the crust. And we're just gonna finish this with a little bit of olive oil. Pick that up, move it around, and you can see how nice and light and crackery this is. And we'll finish with a little bit of sea salt as well. And this is ready to just cut into strips and serve. Again, with a really good side salad maybe, or charcuterie board. Enjoy. And now we're going to show you how to make traditional calzone. So you're going to be using the same pizza dough just as you would for a hand-stretched Neapolitan pizza. Only this time what we're going to do is we're going to stretch using a rolling pin. Because I'm not looking for that puffy rigid crust that you would need for a hand-stretched pizza. And I'm just looking for more of a flat disc here because this is ultimately just gonna be stuffed and crimped. You'll also notice that I am not making this as large as I would a pizza. So now that you have your dough stretched out, we're ready to fill. And we're gonna be using just leftover ingredients that we have from pizza, feel free to do the same. So we have some cooked San Marzano tomatoes, and that's cooked down with some garlic and some herbs. This is just a cheese mixture of ricotta, fresh mozzarella, some parmigiano, nutmeg, salt, and pepper. We've got some ham here. And finally, some 
sauteed spinach. Now once this is ready to fold over, you're just going to take the other half and then you can crimp this with either a fork or do a decorative crimping finish. So I'm just going to pinch and fold over the sides. And once you're ready, just get it right onto a wooden peel and you can put it into the oven just as you would a pizza. This is going to need about 30 seconds to develop a rigid crust on the bottom before I start moving it with the polino. And a really common question that we get is whether you should pierce it, when you should pierce it, and also whether you should baste it. We're going to be piercing halfway through cook time today, and the reason we're doing that is because we want the steam to build up inside the calzone so that we get a nice puffy crust. We are going to be basting also with some olive oil. That's just going to give it a nice finish. It'll finish the second half and get nice and brown, um, a lot of really nice color on it. So we're about halfway through cook time. I'm going to pull this forward. We'll grab a knife and I'm just going to make two piercings right in the top. And we'll finish with a little bit of olive oil before placing it back into the oven to finish cooking. So now we're finished cooking. And we can just pull this out, let it cool off, and it's ready to cut and serve. We're going to be using a serrated knife to just saw through the top. If you were to use a chef's knife, you might deflate it a little bit by applying overhead pressure. So we want to try to avoid that. And now you're ready to eat. And now we're going to show you how to use the same technique as you would for calzone with different fillings to make an Argentinian style empanada. So I have two fillings here. This one is a vegetarian option. So we have some black beans, roasted corn, chili, cilantro, and smoked mozzarella. And then this one is a traditional Argentinian style braised brisket with some smoked paprika, chilies, onion, and olives. And we'll finish this one off with some Sonoma Dry Jack. And it's going to be the same technique as the calzone. So just fold over and we're going to use that same pinch and fold technique. Again, you can always use a fork to crimp if you'd rather do that. And now we're ready to load them into the oven. These will cook in the same style as the calzone. So we'll let them sit on the floor, develop a crust, and then halfway through, we're gonna pierce this to release some of the steam, and then also baste it with a little bit of olive oil to finish. And we're commonly making calzone or empanadas off to the side of the oven while pizza's cooking in the center next to the fire. You can utilize that cooler space off to the side because these have about a minute longer bake time than a pizza. So if you have guests who want to have a calzone or an empanada, feel free to use the side of the oven to do that. So we're halfway through cook time and I'm going to pull this forward, pierce the top, and baste it with some olive oil, just as you would a calzone. And then to serve, you just plate up and you're ready to eat.